Welcome to Lethbridge Got Talent, a celebration of young talent, passion, right here in the heart of Lethbridge. In a small town like ours, supporting youth talent takes a special significance. These talented performers, they pour their hearts and souls into their craft to overcome challenges and chase their dreams. So from breathtaking performances on stage to heartwarming personal anecdotes, we'll witness the awe-inspiring talents of these young stars. So join us as we shine a spotlight on the incredible talent right here in Lethbridge. Before we get to the selections, allow us to introduce you to the incredible judges of the Lethbridge Talent Show. Each judge brings a unique background and unwavering passion to the table. So without further ado, here are your judges. My name is Benta Toft Hansen. I am a university professor at the University of Lethbridge. I teach music theory and uh, some of the, uh, what are called, GLUR classes or classes for non-music majors. Uh, outside of this, I like to garden and put around on my bike and I uh, also like to go to old folks homes and plays for them and do things like that and up until about a year ago I uh, spent most of my summers with New West Theatre. My name is Dai, uh, my role here at CKXU is the community content curator as well as the uh, friends program uh, coordinator. Uh, I got into this role, uh, basically I started volunteering with CKXU years ago doing uh, radio shows. It was just a way to get myself out of the house. I was in some really bad times in my life and uh, some friends really encouraged me to come out because it was a way to meet new people and uh, they knew I loved music and it was to get me back into that love of it. And uh, through volunteering and just hanging out here and seeing what CKXU did for the community, it aligned with what I wanted to see going on with my life. And so I kept pushing to be able to do more here. When you see where there's gaps in a community and where your company can come forward or your business can come forward to fill those gaps, uh, it really becomes something special. I get to talk to corporations across the country about Indigenous inclusion, about unconscious bias, about diversity and inclusion fundamentals. I have a contract in Brampton, Ontario with One Voice, One Team, which goes into schools and works with educators and youth to run camps and programs to inspire them and to bring out their unique talents as youth and to see the potential that they have. So I get to go and mentor uh, university youth on the weekends all around Ontario through the Pinball Clemens Foundation. You know, I get to sit there and, and go in and talk to youth and mentor youth on allyship and anti-oppression. And then through my own company, I get to go in to corporations that are looking for guidance to work towards truth and reconciliation or how do we make our workspaces more inclusive um, this is where that that potential gap is and that's where the knowledge i've been fortunate to obtain over a number of years i mean i've been in this space 17 years now i've been playing music uh probably <laughs> my earliest memories are sitting on my mother's lap banging on a piano i had my first lessons when i was six uh, so that means i've been playing for 54 years now, and uh, I've been teaching. I'm in my 25th year of teaching at the University of Lethbridge. Uh, I also teach private lessons, but not a lot. I kind of pick and choose who I'm gonna who I'm gonna teach because I don't remember learning how to read music, and so it's difficult for me to teach beginners. Where I find my best accolades is actually coming from students who have graduated and gone away and have done magnificently well for themselves. Uh, a lot of the kids that I taught in my first few years are actually music professors now. Uh, I actually teach with one of them, Nick Sullivan. He was in one of the first classes I ever taught at the university, and now he's a colleague of mine. Um, I have uh, students that uh, are winning Grammys for compositions and, and all sorts of things like that. Myself, um, I have been recognized by uh, the LBGTQ uh, folks for excellence in teaching. I've been nominated a couple of times for the excellence in teaching award here. Then it was always like the drive of trying to do more here. How can I end up doing more? Looking into finding grants to be able to bring a, a passion project of mine to life. I had this drive to want to highlight uh, music, not only just like locally here in Lethbridge, but like across the province of Alberta. I just found uh, just volunteering here, there's so much going on and, and 
across so many different genres that uh, I think we're, people are just missing out on, especially in the age of streaming, where everybody just like pops on a streaming playlist. And so I have that passion of wanting to do that, wanting to work with local musicians, being able to offer recording sessions so they can come record and uh, promote themselves on the air. And then we provide the, the recordings back, uh, being able to like get to know artists more in depth, uh, outside of just like, you know, here's my music, please listen, getting know, to know more about them, their writing process, the music they like listening to, how they find new music, other artists within the province or within their local scene that they like working with, what the local scene is, means to them and how they want to grow and, and support it. Primarily, I host for the record radio show that goes on, on uh, through the airwaves on CKXU. I got it syndicated on CKPN and the Kenny Nation. Um, and that, yeah, it highlights all Alberta music, Alberta musicians, and I've been going going for a while now and keep applying for more and more grants to keep it going. So that way I can try to showcase more because there's just so much out there that I can never encapsulate it all. Music and arts is a means by which kids can communicate when perhaps verbal skills don't work as well. Uh, it's, I think that it is probably one of the most important things that we can have going in this place. The fact that governments tend to think that this is where we should cut. I, I just don't think they really fully understand the magnitude to which music and arts impact a person's life and not only that how it helps them with so many other things like not just musically speaking but in terms of of learning how to organize your time and learning how to be focused on learning how to um be disciplined mm -hmm. and things like that um it, it's vitally important to any community as far as i'm concerned and so when i see youth today especially with uh, more, let's just say, a lot of different and unique obstacles that are out there today from when I was a youth. Uh, there's, I mean, come on, media and the growth of media and the different media outlets that youth have access to, which can create unique opportunities and can create unique challenges along the way as well. You know, and especially when you think about, you know, being on TikTok or you think about being on certain things, right? These social media companies are, they're phenomenally advanced in understanding how our brain works. They know what our brain needs and wants and how that happens. And so I think youth today, you know, they're looking for those outlets. They're looking for those connection points. They're looking for mentors and people that can guide their way. And they're just looking for someone to tell them that they can do it, that, that, that you are worthy of doing it, that, that you can do anything that you really want to, you know, if you make that decision to go for it, to, to just believe in yourself, to understand, to fight for it, that, that youth can do anything. I started doing it. Uh, it was drew, drawn to bringing on youth, uh, starting with like Lethbridge Girls Rock Camp and just some of these young artists, because there was just so much talent, like just raw talent that I was seeing that, uh, you know, when I was growing up, I saw from the people around me, um, so it was just like that drive of being able to to do that and then also seeing that there's in this community there's a bit of a, a bit of a void when it comes to youth um in calgary when i was young there was always shows that i could go to there was bands putting on shows there was djs there was dances there was all these things and so the music scene was accessible for somebody under the age of 18 and then even when i was performing there was ways there was always opportunities to perform there was always venues and i, I think with lethbridge because we are so short on venues that our venues are centered on 18 plus establishments and i know there's certain ones that are trying to push outside of that, there's still not a lot of opportunities for youth to not only like perform, but also take in shows and be part of the music scene and be, the, there's no, there's no spaces where parents feel or guardians feel comfortable enough to leave their children there to just, so they can do their own thing, you know, and it's like all ages shows are good, but they're, you always, sometimes as a kid, like when you're growing up, you didn't want your parents with you. You want to just hang out with your friends. Right. And so I think we're, we're kind of lacking that. And I think. For me, with the uh, platform I had with For The Record, being able to bring the, the, the kids in to perform and get on the radio and get them comfortable with hearing themselves on the radio, also opens me up to network with people, to start talking to people about building towards having those, those spaces, those venues, those opportunities. Uh, because it's, I feel it always takes just like that one person wanting to do it and then the next, you know, working with some others because it's just like one person can't do it alone, right? So, Well, we have an interesting community here. Arts and music have kind of pulled Lethbridge <laughs> screaming and, and 
fighting back into the 21st century. Um, while there is still a pocket of people that are, are very resistant to change, I think a lot more we are seeing people being more accepting of the differences in other people and, and the choices they are, are making and, and the realities that they're living that uh, perhaps instead of saying, oh, no, that's wrong, we're saying, well, maybe I don't understand it, but if it's okay for that person and makes that person happy, then I, I will not be against it or something like that. Um, Lethbridge is a funny city, but I do believe it's moved forward quite, quite significantly. Um, and I think that just the fact that, for instance, we have a, a gay club in Lethbridge, <laughs> you know, 25 years ago, that would have been totally an underground mm -hmm. thing that nobody would have known about. Um, the fact that there is, um, a very vibrant and alive music scene in Lethbridge that isn't just older people, but also uh, including a lot, like, I mean, just what some of the teachers are doing at high schools now in terms of rock bands and, and you know, all the music isn't geared towards uh, wind ensemble and, and playing, like, brass instruments. There's actually uh, a real strong push to, towards using uh, rock instruments, guitars, bass, drums, things like that, and, and really honing and, and allowing these students to explore their type of music and not dead white guy music, right? And, and I think that has changed quite considerably since from when I started to where I am now. We're missing that that space we haven't created that space and i think we need to have the conversations and try to find the people that are willing to do that i know there's a few people in the community that are creating that with like lethbridge girls rock camp and there's the any rock camp and and that but i think we need to start coming together and creating these spaces uh for the youth to not only perform but be able to participate in the music community and i think there's a lot of people within the you know, within the scene that can do that not just like like musicians and promoters and and all all can play a different part in that whether it's uh musicians performing sure they're performing say at a venue at the night but they have a uh, earlier performance that's their warm-up or sound check that the youth can attend that's for people under 18 right or they are doing special shows for the youth or there's uh, the electronic music community comes together and puts on dances that it, <laughs> for stuff like that i think it's just like to be able to do it, we need to create the spaces, but we also need to find the youth that are out there doing these things to encourage them, but also try to build them up. You know, give them, the, give them that constructive feedback, give them those positive reinforcements, and uh, hopefully they'll stay, stick with it, and hopefully they'll uh, find themselves and grow within it. And, you know, and if not, and they find that it's not for them, they move on, at least we've given them those spaces to try that. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Before we reveal the judges' picks, there's an exciting twist. The hosts have the power to select a wildcard contestant to join their team. And the lucky wildcard contestant for Lethbridge Scott Talent is Maria. The judges face a tough decision. Only two contestants will have the opportunity to join their team, leaving us to bid farewell to two talented okay, individuals. So for my first pick, I'm going to pick Michaela. Okay. And the reason I'm picking Michaela is uh, I think that Michaela will benefit a lot from this whole process, but I also think she is a diamond in the rough. I think there's a lot sitting there that she has yet to discover. So, uh, yes, I pick Michaela. That was going to be one of my top picks. Yeah, I, I, that I was going to be. Yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I got to pick first. So. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, can, and I can agree with you, too. It's just like that was why she was one of my top picks, I think. Like, already has that kind of like nice, broad talent, amazing voice. Could really benefit from continuing on and yes. putting, get some more tutelage and work. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. I think, I yeah, think yeah, she had a brilliant voice. And she really did. I just remember sitting there closing my eyes and hearing it, and I was like, wow. This, yeah. is, this is good. This is yeah, good. No, uh, but she needs work with presence, and she, and she needs work <laughs> with with uh, just kind of learning how to perform more, I guess. <laughs> and I think this will be an amazing experience for her. 
Yeah. Uh, I guess I'm up next. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Ace Does ah, It. Ah, so turn around <laughs> is fair play, I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I grew, up, I grew up in the 90s. I grew up with that style of hip-hop. I liked, I liked it. Uh, it gave me a lot of nostalgia vibes. I like how it's not just his music. He's also trying to like turn it into like, his brand, his style, mm -hmm. like his, his lifestyle. And I feel like uh, staying in this uh, might challenge him to write some more stuff because his, his lyrics are really good, really great lyricist. Really good uh, crowd control, like uh, being able to be out in front of an audience and, and work the stage. Um, you know, so I want to see what else he can do. Yeah, I think that's an excellent pick. That I like. I especially love that '90s vibe. You know, connecting to it. But what I also liked was, you know, the stage presence and the potential that does it has when it comes to like, you know, putting your own tracks to it, putting your own kind of spin on it. And then when I saw the kind of audition. I was like, yeah, there's going to be a lot more potential moving through and into the finals. I think it's a good pick. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. I, I liked his authenticity, quite frankly. Um, he might be doing an old style, but he's doing it in a way that is just so absolutely him. And it just grabbed me right from the beginning. So, <laughs> <laughs> so. anyways. Okay, well, awesome. So it's my pick. Very it's exciting. Pick. I'm going to go with Lucy. I I have to... Uh, her lyric, I love her as a songwriter. I loved the song and the way that she moved her emotions through the music. Um, I loved her style, and I just actually like the melody of that she carried. You know, I like the way she moved through her emotions with her lyrics. So I'm going with Lucy. Super excited about this pick. That was going to be another one of my picks because once again, it was all about the audience control, the, uh, natural performer, like really can handle herself in performances, and that's so, like that's what I was looking for when I was going into this was that kind of stuff. Yeah. As somebody that uh, ends up booking like a lot of artists for shows and that, that's that was my my focus and yeah, that's a really good pick. Yeah, I really liked her too. I thought that she just uh, had a presence mm -hmm. that totally grabbed me right from the beginning, like right from when before she even started performing, uh, when she was walking in and how she engaged with us and things like that. That really really grabbed me right from the beginning. So. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and since we, uh, we go uh, a snake style of draft, it's back to me because we, we got the first pick over there. So I'll go again, but this one's good. You guys are going to like me for this one, and I'm proud of this pick. I'm going with Arnie. I have to go with Arnie and the dance bit. I love the choreography. I'm a Red River jigger myself. I utilize the stage. I connect it to his presence of moving around. I think this is going to be an excellent performance at the end of it. So uh, that's my next pick, and I'm super proud of uh, the two that I got here. That was going to be my next pick. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! No, it was. And, and only because I don't know a lot about dance, and yet when he came out and went on stage and started his routine, um, I was totally drawn in by it. It totally... Uh, grabbed me and I was engaged and I thought he did a really, really good job and the fact that he's choreographing his own work mm -hmm. uh, also was something that impressed me quite a lot. Uh, so yeah, I think that is a good choice. Yeah, uh, I, I liked how it's like it was his first time like choreographing coming into this, and I think just like with a little bit of tutelage and some work, I think we can start seeing some more things out of him. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, I agree. I guess I'm up next. All right. I might throw uh, a huge wrench into <laughs> Benta's plans here. Oh. Uh, but, yeah, I'm definitely going to go with Naomi here. Mm. I uh, That's a good one. really, really liked uh, her voice. Uh, and uh, and she had that, that, she wants to be involved in music, like, entirely. Like, the recording, the, the performance end, like, the business end of it and all that. And that, so that those are the kinds of artists I like mm -hmm. to, to uh, work with, uh, especially because, like, I feel... Once she starts getting further into it and all that, uh, she's going to be able to latch on to even more. And this is the kind of program, this is the kind of artist that, that it's looking for, is to be able to mentor somebody that is wanting to have that kind of drive. Mm. And, uh, and mm -hmm. I think she, once she gets that kind of tutelage, she's going to really blow up the, the scene here. And she might honestly go on to live her dream and being like the next big thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Naomi's got some star quality. I yes. think there's no doubt about yes. that. I think one of the feedback that I think we all kind of gave to her was you just got to have more confidence to yep. just take your voice to that next level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think through this process, she's going to do that. And yeah. I think that's that's an excellent pick. And uh, I think that's she's going to do great. That's yeah, I think, I think she's going to find out a lot about what it is she exactly has because she kept her range quite low and quite narrow. And I think this girl's got like... 
like a range <laughs> like this, and, and uh, I think when she finds it, she's going to be very, very pleasantly surprised. Yeah. So yeah, I agree yeah, with yeah. your pick, yeah. but actually yeah. my last pick was going to be Macy. Mm -hmm. So why did I pick Macy? Macy had an innocence about her that I really, really liked, but she she's also got really, really good tone quality. I think that... Um, she, she had a better presence than uh, some of the other ones that we have left here. And I also think that um, her style, she's playing her own instrument. Uh, she's got a lot of talent there. And again, somebody that I think that would benefit a lot from this whole process of being tutored and being shown, okay, try this and maybe you should mm -hmm. do this. And maybe if you experimented with this, it'll open up a whole new side of yourself that you didn't even know existed. Absolutely. So that is going to be my pick, and I like the letter M, so there. <laughs> That's a solid like, reason, I guess. Absolutely. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, when I think of Macy, like I know she's a 16-year-old from, you know, a small town Barnwell, um, you know, coming out, you know, coming out, putting her art out there. I thought that was really great to see, and I think you're right. I think when she gets coaching, Mm -hmm. I think it's going to just come into fine form, and she's going to be an excellent singer. Yep. Her voice is going to really carry. It's going to be exciting to see her at, throughout the end of this process yes. and through this process. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, one that I would certainly keep an eye on as well. Yep. Yep. So there we have it. Now, let's see who the judges have chosen. Team Bento welcomes Michaela and Macy. Team Roy consists of Arnie and Lucy. And Dai selected Does It and Naomi as their top picks to win the talent show. Stay tuned as the competition heats up and Dee's incredible performance battle it out for the title. Mm -hmm.